Hi Capricorn Sun and Rising, welcome to your February 2024 Astro Update. It's Raina here. Well, I just get this image of Capricorn hitting a jackpot. But perhaps that wording isn't quite correct because a jackpot implies gambling and I'm referring to just maybe it's money that you've worked very hard to start to flow in your life. And I'll tell you why I'm just ooing and eyeing over February. First of all, February is the first month of the year. Of course, you know, we just started 2024, but it's uh, completely free of retrogrades from all planets. And in January, uh, Mercury went direct on the 1st, and so you could say after that, it was pretty smooth sailing or clear roads ahead. But, but Uranus is not retrograding and or going direct until the 27th. And I'm saying it in, in the present tense or the future tense because I'm recording this in the second week of January. And a lot of you will be listening then. So I want to uh, call your attention to what I think is a very phenomenal event. And that is that on the 20th of January, the sun leaves your sign Capricorn and goes into the next sign, which is Aquarius. But on that exact same day, we have Uranus going in, I mean, uh, Pluto going out of your sign into Aquarius. And if you think about it, it could have happened at any time, but it just so happened to be when the sun went into Aquarius. So they're forming a conjunction. And this is something where uh, for Capricorn individuals, this will fall in your second house of earned income. So this theme is going to carry you forward for years to come because uh, Pluto in the second house is going to be a thing, uh, I think until 2044, it's like 20 years. But we are going to have a, a brief transit of Pluto back into Capricorn next September through November, I believe. So it's not done with you yet as Capricorn sun signs or even the rising sign. Um, but, you know, Pluto isn't always in Aquarius. So this time of the year, you wouldn't have had that. So this is Pluto can bring wealth. I'm not saying on January 20th, I'm saying within the next 20 years. And of course, this is a general forecast because where your second house cusp is, like what degree of whatever it's supposed to be, it might not even be in um, Aquarius. It might be that you have a little bit of Capricorn in the second house. And that's a sign at the house cusp. But it's going to get there eventually, so it's all good. So we're going to just keep it general. And um, the exciting thing about this is that it really does focus on material resources with so much going on in that second house. So on January 20th, the sun meets up with uh, Pluto in Aquarius and kind of ushers in the energies in February that are very populous, that are very much tied to the collective, the, uh, the hu humanitarian, the human race, rather than the authority figures that Capricorn represents. So it's very heady, you know, it's very exciting because, um, since Aquarius represents the whole, there's this feeling of being connected with everyone. But for you, this is your material power with Pluto here. 
And then on the 5th of February, Mercury goes into this domain. And that can run the gamut of why you're thinking about money. Maybe you're crunching the numbers. Uh, and there could be all kinds of reasons. Probably something that Capricorns do regularly anyway. Keep, keeping a, a budget and, you know, checking your list twice making sure everything is on point. Uh, so there might be some paperwork that you're dealing with that is connected to your finances uh, as well, or you're speaking to somebody about them. Um, and then on the ninth, we have a new moon here. So there's new developments with your money. And since February is the first month where all the plants are direct, this is a great opportunity for you to take some kind of forward step in something that has to do with your finances, if there's anything like that, or maybe even start a new income stream. It's a perfect time for that. I mean, if you actually have ideas, I, I guess I would say, on the 13th, Mars goes into this domain. And this is the hustling energy. This is the person who's like, I really, maybe you get inspired by something and you want to do it more because you're getting, um, maybe you did start a second income stream and it's taking off like a rocket and you have to work longer hours, but you're trying to uh, sustain it because you want you don't want it to uh, to kind of falter you're you may have a day job but you're doing something on the side I don't know but Mars is putting a lot of effort into something three days later on the 16th Venus goes here so you can see what I'm talking about so much here oh by the way you know Mars didn't you know this time last year Mars was stuck in Gemini uh, for you, Capricorn. And that is fairly significant because this is the sixth house. That is the sixth house, uh, Gemini for you. So you might have been either you had conflicts with coworkers or you were just working overtime. So that might have been um, the first stages of kind of paving the way financially for the harvest that you might be receiving now. But you didn't have Mars here because it, it this is the first time it's been able to get here. I don't know if it's been two years or maybe a little bit less than that, but that's pretty impressive. When Venus comes here three days later, uh, Venus isn't a, Venus rules the second house. Venus is the attractor. So Venus is passive in a sense. Mars is very active. Um, I personally believe that when people are hearing about manifestation, for instance, that the passive side of things is emphasized and I feel that that is unfortunate because I don't feel that that is how life works I feel like it is much more um the case that I mean well it's actually both I, but taking action is definitely a part of it not just waiting for something to drop in your lap but on the other hand there are certainly are people out here who they work three jobs and they're just like constantly working and they might not even have a real game plan. They're just kind of trying to, they're in survival mode and they think that that's how, what life is about. And I guess you could say from their vantage point that that's true, but they're creating that because they're giving attention to the idea of survival uh, obviously there are people, uh, all of us may at one time or another have to work, um, a lot harder than we want to, because we just don't feel like we have any other options. But the, the key is 
to exert effort in a way that is what you want to do. That would be the ultimate. Exerting a lot of effort in something that you really have no connection to, but you're just going through the motions, that is inconsistent energy. It's not compatible with what you want to accomplish. So anyway, um, I do feel like this is going to be a good money month um, for you in general because other factors may you know, kind of, uh, suggest other things are going on with you that you may not be doing what I'm saying you're doing. It might show up in a different way, but Venus, because Venus rules the second house, Venus is the expert of this area. On the 18th, the sun goes into Pisces and five days later on the 23rd, Mercury goes into Pisces for Capricorns. Pisces is your third house. And this is the house in astrology that is ruled by Gemini and deals with the latest news. It can be like journalism, writing, uh, social media, internet-based stuff, brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, when it comes to family members or neighbors, your local area, I should say. So with Mercury, the ruler of this house in its own domain, this could be that full moon the next day could still have that um, influence. And the interesting thing about it is that since Mercury is in Pisces, the, you know, people may be prone to uh, believe lies. But, you know, a lot of times when I hear things on, I, I don't watch the news per se, but I do, you know, see headlines and things like that. And I think, I don't believe a word of that, but some other people do. And I feel like sometimes people want to believe things. There's a part of them, maybe their higher self that's saying, Oh God, you know, rolling their eyes. And then there's the, the, the part that doesn't want to even consider that their deluded state is threatened by reality. So we're going to see something going on, maybe news wise that they're trying to mislead us and it could have a supernatural event. There have been conspiracy uh, realists who have talked about how um, they're going to have an alien invasion in 2024. Well, they've already had a couple of news stories that are like priming the pump to, to get us to receive it when it happens. So the thing is with you is that you have had Neptune in this domain for so many years that I think some Capricorn individuals are uh, already getting quite uh, expand. Well, I don't know if I, should I say expanded or just like out in the atmosphere in the galaxy with some of your uh, thinking because Pisces is not rational and I'm not saying that in a bad way. There's linear thinking and then if you call something irrational, it can mean that it's very intuitive. It can mean that it's very creative. So um, you're going to have the actual ruler of the third house in that area on the 23rd, but you already have the influences with your mental with your mentality because of, of, uh, Neptune, but your ruler Saturn here is, I think, I think what, um, I, I would say about Saturn in the third house is that it can make a person more disciplined mentally. And those two plants together could indicate studying meditation. Yes, you can study uh, meditation. It's not just something you sit and do nothing. 
uh, there are different techniques. And because Capricorn is such an ambitious sign, you may take it to the nth degree, meaning that you become a meditation teacher. You Maybe you go and do the Vipassana thing where you spend 10 days. It's like something that you challenge yourself to discipline your mind to that level where you're just meditating for 10 hours a day. Um, so on the 24th, we have, uh, and you may learn news about siblings and, or be talking to them even more than you usually are. And then the very next day on the 24th, we have a full moon at five degrees of Virgo. And this is a fellow earth sign. So this trines you, and this is coming from the ninth house. So there could be some kind of um, spiritual download, uh, that I feel can really set you on the course of what it is that you want life to mean for you, because the ninth house is very philosophical. And sometimes it takes, um, certain events to gel, uh, to, to have our philosophies gel because a lot of times we're very, um, we're just kind of doing our thing. And then, uh, certain things happen and we realize, you know, so we're just constantly getting information in life. And then we put two and two together and we say, you know, I really am ambitious. I'm thinking of Capricorns, but I don't really love what I'm doing. And yes, I'm getting all these positive strokes. I'm getting all these, um, people are really supportive of me doing these things, but I'm not happy and I have to be happy. So this, this could be kind of the dawning of some realization for you. Um, it can also be the end of a trip. This is the area of long distance travel or the finalization of plans of a trip. This is the area of expansions. So for, Capricorn, anything like maybe you're graduating from university. I know it's only February, but stranger things have happened or, um, finally decided on a major. I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, in any case, maybe you're publishing a book that can be ninth house too. All right. Capricorn. Um, oh, did I say, uh, well, I, well, I don't have to talk about that because that's actually January. I was talking about, you know, how Pluto was leaving your sign on January 20th, and that might be an important time for you if you're listening in January. So, okay. Well, I hope you have a great month. If you would like a private reading with me, um, I'm promoting my double readings. I have several package deals. The one in particular I'm, I'm promoting because this is an astrological reading is my deep dive reading, which is an hour of natal chart analysis with an hour of transits for $85, $0.85. So that's like at least two hours for this is us dollars. And, um, I have those readings as standalone readings plus, um, career readings, love readings. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainamoonastrology.com. Thanks for listening. Bye.